Hey everybody, welcome to your new Dell Latitude laptop uh, initial training. Um, I'm sure there will be more of these. Uh, I'm going to be looking just under the lens for this first part, so it might feel a little weird. Um, we're really excited that you're getting a new 15-inch Dell Latitude this year. If you want to dig a little bit deeper online, it's called the Latitude E5550. Just to clarify, uh, some of you opted to receive a Dell Latitude, which is why you're watching this film, but some of you opted for a MacBook Air, and some of you competed to win the MacBook Pro Content Creator Package. So you're going to see a variety of devices all around your school this year, and we think that that's a good thing. Hopefully you're getting what you feel uh, will make you most comfortable and will help you function and innovate in your classroom. This has been a pretty massive endeavor, and as with any large initiative, there will be unforeseen problems. Uh, please know that we're trying to get you what you need, and we have nothing but the highest expectations for ourselves in supporting these new devices. Also, as we seek to differentiate for your needs, for your needs please realize that each of your classrooms is going to be a unique situation. This places some of the responsibility on you to learn how to do things your way with your device in your learning environment. As always, if you need help troubleshooting your particular setup in your classroom, you can always work with your school tech, but I'm always willing to find some time to come work with you as soon as I possibly can, and so is Natalia Dooley, our elementary specialist. There's no way we're going to be able to cover everything in this video, but we can definitely begin to skim the surface and make you more comfortable. I'm going to go ahead and shrink down now and kind of look over here, uh, and we'll walk through the details of your new device and how it interacts with our network. Before we dig in too deeply, you should know that we added a number of additional Windows-related training videos to this YouTube playlist. Go ahead and explore them if you get some time. Uh, they might answer some of your further questions. This playlist is going to grow over time, but for now, you'll find multiple videos about Windows Movie Maker and other tools that might make it uh, a little more fun. Now on to your machine. Your new Dell Latitude has a 15-inch screen. It's got 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes solid state drive. If you've never used a solid state drive, or SSD for short, then I think you're in for a real treat. There's no moving parts in them, and the technology is blazing fast. It's also safer because there's no moving parts, so if you drop the machine, it's not likely to go down. A typical reboot will take a matter of seconds, and most applications open in about two seconds or less. Personally, I've experienced an SSD in two of my home computers, and I can honestly say that it's the coolest new advancement in personal computing uh, in at least a decade. The operating system on your machine is Windows 7. It's going to look and feel almost identical to the virtual environment. That was on purpose. But just so you know, it's not virtual. It's a real computer. If you need to access virtual environment, though, from your new Dell, that's not a big deal. All you got to do is find the VMware Horizon client in all programs uh, in the start button and go ahead and log in and then you're in virtual. So you kind of got both. The user interface is pretty sweet. You got a full size keyboard here with a numeric keypad to the right. This is going to be clutch for iNow grade entry. Um, props to Aaron Yu for finding this particular model because the keypad I think is great for teachers. Sorry Mac users, this isn't happening for you. Let's look at your inputs and outputs. First, you've got a docking port on the bottom that works with most Latitude docking stations. If you're interested, contact technology and they can recommend a docking station for you. You've got two USB 3.0 slots for various peripherals. For those of you who don't know, USB 3.0 is relatively new and it's extremely fast. It's a lot faster than traditional USB, so there are lots of cool new options. You've got an Ethernet port on the back that typically doesn't get used by teachers. You also have an SD card slot. This slot is for a standard SD card that's traditionally used in digital cameras and camcorders. This will be especially helpful for digital media teachers and elementary exploratory teachers focused on photography or video production. But it's also very useful if you want to shoot photography or video uh, for your classroom and you need to get it into your machine. You've got an HDMI port for running digitally to a TV screen or a newer projector. For example, you Bob Jones teachers will now be able to run via HDMI to your clear touch panels if you like, but it's not required. Running into an older projector or monitor via VGA is extremely easy on these machines because the VGA port is right here on the back. Just plug it in and go. 
One great common practice I recommend is creating Google Slides or placing your items into your U Drive and then using your classroom computer to pull them up in Google Drive or in your U Drive. This saves you from unplugging and replugging all day every day and it's what I typically try to do. It definitely saves wear and tear on the cabling and the machines so it's a pretty good practice. But if you really need to project from your new device directly, which many of you will choose to do, you'll need to unplug the VGA cable from your classroom computer and simply plug it into the back of your Dell. The only other port on your computer besides the headphone jack is your power adapter port. Your Dell will come equipped with the latest Microsoft Office, which is 2013. To map to a network drive or a shared folder on your Dell, there's a slightly different procedure that's being recommended now by technology. Simply click the Start button, choose Computer, then right-click on Computer, and choose Add a Network Location. That's the new part. Click Next a couple of times, and then type in the path. In my case, I would type, I would type backslash backslash trc-fs-co backslash staff backslash, and then I'd wait a second. I want to map our instruction shared folder, so I'll select that one. Select the one that you'd like to connect to, and then tell it what you want the drive to be called. You can call this anything you want now. In this case, I think I'll call it MCS instruction. The folder then shows up as a shortcut in your computer window. This can get complicated, so go ahead and touch base with your tech if you're struggling to access your school shared folder, or if you're not sure about what path you're going to need. Printing on your Dell should be a breeze. It's basically identical to what you're accustomed to. If you go to print something and the printer isn't there, simply click Find Printer here and choose from the list. As for getting new apps on your Dell, this part's pretty cool for you Dell users. Technology has installed something called Software Center, and it's a Microsoft product. With this, you'll never need to get an administrator's password to install the software you need, but you will need to put in a ticket if the software isn't added and available there yet. To get there, simply go to the Start button, then select All Programs, then Microsoft System Center, then choose Software Center, or you can just type Software Center in the search field. Here, you can view any available software that has been pushed to your device. Pick an application, and choose install in blue at the bottom right. If you don't see what you need, go ahead and submit a ticket asking for that software. If it's free, it's probably not going to be a problem to push it to you. If it costs money, technology will get with your bookkeeper to get it going for you. Typically, software ordering goes through our technology department because they can get price breaks and there are a few other reasons. Okay, there is absolutely no way I covered everything, guys, but this should get you rolling. I wouldn't be surprised if I do a part two in the very near future after the unforeseen questions roll in. As always, please be patient with us as we work out these kinks. These devices are intended to, in the long run, make your life as an educator so much better. Have fun with them. Experiment with them. Don't force them yet. Find what works best for you. Go ahead and email me at dmwit at madisoncity.k12.al.us if you need something related to usability, and submit a ticket if you've got a malfunction, problems logging in, or if you need additional software. I hope you enjoy your new device and have a great Labor Day weekend.